Hey, Jeff, I'm so excited that we could make this happen today. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, for having me as a guest. I appreciate it. Yes, I've got, we're going to have a great conversation, lots to talk about. I know we originally met at the National Caregiving Conference. I think it might even have been over a, a year or two ago. Um, we were in a watercolor happy hour with sponsored by AARP where they gave us little water coloring kits and um, and that was fun. I need to, reminds me that I need to pull that out and do that. So this is a good time to do it while we're spending more time at home these days. Absolutely. Yes. So important. So we, we like to kick off the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast with pulling some words of inspiration and encouragement from the Happy Healthy Caregiver jar. This was a jar that I created for my sister when we transitioned the primary care from me, my mom, from me to her, just felt like I was giving her this overwhelming stuff. And I just wanted to um, have a little bit of, of inspiration in her ear. So today's message says, and I'd love to get your thoughts on this. It says, the more you praise and celebrate your life, the more there is in life to celebrate. And that's from Oprah Winfrey. I, I totally believe that. Um, and that actually uh, meshes with one of my greatest ideas is um, gratitude. Yeah. She's big on gratitude too. And I know that she prompted me to kind of, you know, with her one of her guests to, to start that. And then, you know, every now and then I get lazy with it and I dust it back off because life is just flows better. I think when you start focusing on the good stuff. Um, and I work out with a small group of, of women and do some strength training twice a week. And we always ask each other what was good in your week. And so it's a, it's a mindful way to just kind of keep that present and we can get so caught up in the doing, doing, doing that just to kind of get sit back and reflect, I think is important. Absolutely. Well, I know about you because we had that conversation. Um, you know, I've been, I've been keeping in touch with you, what you're doing online. And then I just finished your book. Um, I've had it for a while, but I'd like to read them just in time before the, we, the conversation. So it's nice and fresh. Uh, and it's called The Intentional Caregiver Mastering Self-Care. So you're right up my alley. I love, you speak my mindset and, and just echo and have a very eloquent way of, of describing, describing the, um, what's happening and making people um, take action and know that there is, while there does seem like there's a lot out of our control, there are many things that are in our control um, but I wanted, and we're going to touch on all of that, but I wanted you to first summarize your caregiving experience for us. So I know you've been a caregiver for over 20 years. <laughs> That's a long time. Yes. Tell yes. us more about that. Well, I first, um, was introduced to caregiving, um, when my mother was, uh, who was perfectly healthy at the time, um, suffered a stroke. And just like that. I was on a plane to Florida, which she was, she, that's where she was vacationing and had the stroke. Mm. And um, I had no idea what I was in for. <laughs> it, um, so after about six months in Florida of rehab, she um, was transferred to a facility in uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, which is near where we lived at the time. And then um, we brought her home when she was ready. And I cared for her with my brother, Alex. And um, it was very difficult. I had no idea what I was doing. And um, support, um, you know, just, just some family, just some of her sisters. Mm -hmm. And um, none, none, you know, deep support for me, you know, meaningful support for me and my brother. Um, we were sort of on our own and uh, thankfully um, there was a program in town run by Easter Seals with, where she could go during the day and we could have some rest. So, um, but it was, it was a full-time job. My brother and I would uh, switch off taking care of her. She was left paralyzed on her left side and unable to speak from the stroke. Mm -hmm permanently. And, um, were you able to work at that time? 
unable to work. Yeah, it's a lot. It it was a lot. Uh, my brother and I mortgaged the house so we could survive and take care of my mother. That was that was the primary goal, and um, it felt like I was on cruise control mm. because I didn't. It was all for my mother. It was all for my mother. There was nothing I did for myself. You lost yourself, your sense of self. Absolutely. I lost my identity. Mm -hmm. And which is one of the worst things you can do as a caregiver. Mm -hmm. And um, so I call that you hit your bottom, Jeff. Yes, I hit my bottom. Yeah. yeah. And I was there for, for quite a while. And um, so moving, moving forward, we took care of my mother for about a year and a half at home. And then um, it just got too much. It, it became too much. Her health was failing. So we placed her in a nursing home. And, um, and too much I, for you, your health and happiness as well. Yes. yes. Both of, both I, didn't know, I didn't know it, the concept of self-care. Yeah. I didn't know about that concept. And um, as, as you know, there's nothing more important than self-care. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what my book is all about. It's, yeah, because um, it's the energy source, frankly. It, just it is. To do everything that you need to do. Thank you for those words. It was um, the energy source you need to, to care for someone else. And I, I, I didn't, I wasn't informed. I didn't reach out. I didn't know how to reach out. And um, it was just an inward and downward spiral. So um, my mother passed away um, a couple years later after she went into the nursing home. And um, fast forward to 2001, I, was, I, re I married my beautiful wife, Karen. And in 2004, she was diagnosed with mesothelioma, mm. which is a rare uh, lung disease. And she had basically, she was perfectly healthy on the outside, but she had five months to live if she didn't go, excuse me, go through with an experimental surgery. Wow. And for those that are, that's horrific. First of all, you just finished this, this stint with your mom that was completely yes. draining and overwhelming you meet the love of your life you you know have this plans of of what your life is going to look like which did not did not involve um cancer for those who aren't familiar let's say cancer caused by asbestos because exactly. you, i think you'd share it she did not smoke she had this rare lung okay. cancer yeah. um is it like how do people get that? Is that just where they live or? Well, it's, um, it's environmental exposure. It's, um, unfortunately it's not banned in the United States. Um, it's, it's, it could be an insulation, uh, pipe insulation. It could be floor tile. Um, it's just in our environment mm. and, um, it's very difficult to, remediate and get rid of it completely because it was used so much in, um, you know, in the United States, it was used a lot as well as other countries. Hopefully not still used, although you said it's still. It's still legal, believe it or not. And um, I'm sure many of your uh, viewers have uh, seen the commercials for law firms, which are very prevalent on TV these days. But, um, were you able to benefit in any way from any of that? No. Okay. Yeah. We, we, um, we were unable to, we did uh, find a lawyer and we were unable to find the point of exposure, which is what you need. Yeah. And um, to, to discover. And um, we just, unfortunately, we had to get over or process that we were not ever going to receive compensation of any kind. And that was difficult. Yeah. Yeah. You that want someone to pay, you want someone to pay for this. Like you did, she did not choose this and she took yeah. care of herself. And, um, yeah. and so there was a time for time to process that. 
Mm -hmm. Of course. And um, so she had the experimental surgery, I take it, because she's yes. still, still with us. She had the experimental surgery. It was, it was successful. And today I'm happy to tell you that she's 16 years cancer free, which is, it's just a miracle. It is a miracle. Yes, it's good news. And unfortunately, she was recently um, diagnosed with breast cancer. So, um, which, you know, they tell us is easily treatable, but it's still, it's another, you know, fight for her. Yes. So you got to dust off some of those old tools and the things that you, how you got through this 16 years of, you know, uh, or the initial when she was treated and, and, um, and you, you yeah. know more now than you did then. I, I know much more now. And you know what I've decided? I've decided that I'm going to be this, this time I'm going to be grateful for, I'm going to be grateful for the physicians. I'm going to be grateful for the support system we have. And I'm going to be grateful for, um, you know what? I'm going to be grateful for my wisdom. Yeah. And I'm also grateful for her strength. Well, she, you've got our prayers. And now you've got, you know, the prayers of hopefully everybody that's listening to this, they're going to hear it and be like, come on, you know, give this family a break. The grants, they need your prayers. So um, I. And all I, are welcome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need your prayer warriors. We'll take it. Um, it's a lot. So I, you know, I want to dig into some of the things that you shared. I love your mindset. I think I mentioned that. Um, we do not have as many men on this podcast as I would like. I think, you know, more caregivers coming forward that are men, um, and sharing their story is completely welcomed on my podcast. Um, but it, do you see differences between being a, a, a male and a, and a female caregiver? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think the, from my experience, the majority and, you know, my, particularly my brother, seeing my brother care for my mother, um, men tend, to, you know, men in our society tend to bottle things up and, and try to get over or, you know, power through mm -hmm. the situation and disregard their emotions. And I am here, particularly today, to say, wait a minute, that, that is, that's a setup for, for, for failure. Mm -hmm. Because when you take, when you invest in yourself and self-care and are mindful of your emotions, then you can t and take time to process them. Then you can you can say you can be purposeful on your journey. Like you can take time to find peace. Yes, which is so important for for um, caregivers is yeah. to have moments of peace and. I believe that everything happens for a reason. And I, I believe I'm here to, to share that message with you. And, 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 and they need you. it. They need yeah. it. And you do it very well and eloquently. I, what, what I mentioned earlier about the book is that, um, and, and Jeff doesn't pay me to, <laughs> to say any of these things, but every, and after every chapter, he's got questions for journaling. And I think your hope is that, you know, male caregivers will hopefully see that a, a man wrote this book, um, will pick it up, and that you are encouraging them to put their feelings on the pages um, by asking them questions to provoke emotion and feeling. And so yes. after, after everything, um, you know, not a, not a ton of questions, and I know it's not a pressure, you know, you've got to do it. Um, but I, I respect that. And I, I love a journal because they've, those have been very helpful to me. I think it helps you process, yes. um, to when you put things on paper and, um, and it, it, and also will 
be something that you can look back on and say, oh my gosh, you know, how did I get through this? Um, and you have the proof in the yeah. words. I, um, when um, I started becoming a caregiver for my wife, I was sort of like, oh no, it's happening again. And then, you know, I hit bottom again mm. because I didn't, you know, I still didn't know about self-care. And then I realized um, through the help of a support group that you can actually choose your emotions. You can mm -hmm. choose how you want to be with any given situation. And um, how was that when you tried that on, you know, after you heard that, like, and you started trying it on and seeing if that fit for you? It was, it was a revelation. It was like, it was like, oh my goodness, this is what I've been waiting for my whole caregiving experience. It's like somebody say to me, you don't have to be a victim. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can choose to be strong. You can choose to be empowered. And that was so freeing for me. Yeah, it was like a big weight has, you know, fallen off my shoulders. Yeah. Two things can be true at the same time. I think you can, you can be an amazing caregiver and you can be, you know, have a happy and healthy life yourself. Like Absolutely. it's not an either or. Um, and I, I love, I love that. I'm, I'm glad that you got there and that, you know, you're building this tool set. Where did, where were you able to find support? Like if people are listening and they're like, I need this support. It was, um, it was, at the time, it was called the Wellness Community. I think it has another name um, these days. But um, if, if you Google it, the, it'll, it'll come okay. up. I'll, I'll find it and try to link to it. And then, is it related to, the, you know, was it specific for people who are helping people with cancer or was it for anybody? Um, the Wellness Community, I believe, um, was for people, you know, I think it was for anybody. Okay, good. But the particular uh, workshop that I took, um, this is a national organization, by the way. Okay, great. And I, I took a class at a local chapter, just to clarify. And I took a class that was taught by a life coach and it was called Beyond Survival. Hmm. So it was for, it was for survivors of uh, cancer and it was for their caregivers. I love it. I love it. And um, I was the only, I think I was the only man there and I was the only caregiver there. So it was- well, A lot uh, of people don't even self-identify. Like it's hard to, it's hard to get them in the places that they need to be if they don't know what they're even Googling, you know, so. Exactly, and I came upon this purely by accident. Yeah, well, divine, divine yeah, intervention. Divine intervention. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Are you still up in New England? Yes, I am. I am uh, located 45 minutes north of Boston. Okay. Because I know one of the things, too, that you, people don't think about, and um, my sister's in northern Michigan caring for my mom, and mom's on oxygen 24-7, but you had to, you talk about how you had to prepare for the unexpected. Uh, what does that look like for y'all? Um, preparing for the unexpected. Um, I'll go back to the times where she's on, well my wife is on a ventilator at night mm -hmm. she has a trach and she she needs a ventilator for breathing support and the you know we get we get snow up here and mm -hmm. sometimes the power goes out so um this is just one you know one uh example of, of expecting the unexpected was you know like the power would go out and all of a sudden we would have to pack up all the medical supplies and go to a, find a hotel room mm -hmm. in the middle of a snowstorm. So that was very trying. It was, um, you know, stressful mm -hmm. for both of us. Excuse me. And um, eventually we just, we, we said, you know what? If we need to prepare for, for events like these, so we, we got a generator 
and but which has been very helpful and i realize not everybody can afford a generator yeah my sister but, went the same route the generator yeah. and, i mean mom's uh, not even mobile so it was not an yeah. option it was it's just, it was just one step we took to empower ourselves mm -hmm. to okay that's when the lights go out now we don't have to you know jump up in the middle of the night and you know take you know, an hour to pack, you know, an hour to find a hotel room and an hour to unpack. Yeah. And the expense and the, and, and the, the peace of mind of and God forbid yeah. you sl slip on the ice or yeah. Yeah. Lots so, of it, things. so I guess my message is to prepare for events so they don't turn into a crisis. Yeah. Get in front of it. Yep. Because yeah, get in front of anticipate. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, I think too that one of the other takeaways I got was from your your book, Intentional Caregiver, is you know, so often in caregiving, I think we talk about what we lose. You know, we lose our sense of self, we we feel isolated, we're overwhelmed, and um, and all of those things are can be true you know again you can have two things true at the same time but you also talk about these caregiving bonuses or these hidden treasures that you get from um from caregiving and i don't know if you could just talk a little bit about some of those things that you've real recognized uh, that you've gained that you've gained from caregiving well first of all caregiving has been the greatest unexpected gift in my life mm. Um, the gifts just keep on coming. Um, I've, I've learned to be, you know, in touch with my emotions. I've learned to be, uh, to handle a crisis. Um, I've learned to, uh, it's actually brought us closer as a, as a couple. Mm -hmm. uh, I've learned to communicate uh, better and I've, I've learned to reach out and accept support. What um, does that look like? Like how, are, how do you accept help from others? That's a good question. Um, you have to be, I think you have to be available. You have to be willing to listen, mm -hmm. a willing to see other perspectives. And um, willing to try new things, frankly. Um, you know, we so, like taking care of my mother. We'd off, I'd often, we'd often make the same mistakes or do the same thing, and um, expecting a, a, you know a different uh -oh. result. Insanity, yeah. <laughs> insanity. What's the yeah. what's the definition of insanity? Mm -hmm. So. Um, now we we have we have support and we can we're open to um and also caregiving has brought me better communication with the doctors mm -hmm. if i could just go back for a second but um the i i know what questions to ask now i have a network of a support system so i don't lose my sense of self and my identity and um, I'm ex willing to accept help. Yeah. Like meals. If, if uh, somebody is willing to accept, you know, to make meals or her parents who live by, fortunately, you know, make or offer to make dinner or lunch or even pick the up an yes. coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The answer is yes. Mm hmm. Is, is things just go better when you're willing to accept mm -hmm. help. That's great. Yeah, you, you, you can tell you've been doing this for a while and you've matured and you're learning things. And I know I see things, even just in talking to you, like the whole with, with gratitude being a, a skill, I think resilience, how you've, you know, how you're oh, handling oh. This, this recent news with, you know, Karen's breast cancer and, and your mindset for that. And like, you know, instead of, looking you know being angry you're just immediately going to gratitude that's 
Right. Instead of looking for the next crisis, yeah. I have found peace. That's good. I found inner peace. And when I am anxious, Karen knows I'm anxious and she gets anxious. When I'm peaceful, she knows I'm peaceful and she's peaceful. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to be in touch with your emotions. Mm -hmm. I can't emphasize that enough. That's so smart. You, you know, talk, and, talk, and it's just hard if we're cutting you off. And it's, and it's, it's so important to um, not, I'm not trying to like influence my wife, but I'm just trying to invite her to see different viewpoints and perspectives, mm -hmm. which is so important when you're dealing with a health crisis. It, yeah. Things are not just black and white. No, no. And, and that comes through too, is that, you know, you're constantly, you know, sharing, um, asking her questions, getting her involved, doing, you know, the, the, with the options. Um, you talk about in how with the medical staff, how you uh, have some, you know, you really try to encourage them to use your first names. Um, yes. That resonated with me. Yes. Why do you think that's important? Well, I, I, I look back to um, my first interactions with, with the medical staff, you know, with my mother and, you know, my wife. And sometimes they just don't, you know, sometimes the doctor would say, oh, the grants are here. They wouldn't even acknowledge me as a person. And that hurt. Yeah. It's like I realized, the, you know, the purpose of the appointment is to get my wife medical care. But to discount somebody as a person, it's, it's emotionally negative. There's yeah. a negative emotions there. And it's like, you don't even see me. Yeah. Do you, has, did anyone, I'm curious, in all these years that you've been caregiving, has anybody in the healthcare system ever said to you, Jeff, oh my, you're a family caregiver and this must be super overwhelming for you. And by the way, here are some resources that you can connect to to help, to help you cope with this. I'm just curious to how many times that's happened. I'm trying to think, but... Uh... Unfortunately, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I would have to like, say How no. are you doing, Jeff? Like, yeah. I, I will um, say hospice, it, it, we've had experience with hospice with my dad and my mother-in-law and my mom now. And I give them kudos because they, they definitely have that. But that is my wish for what I wish for would change in the healthcare community. Uh, me too. It's so important. Um, your state the state of uh, well-being, I mean, like emotions, the emotional mm -hmm. state is, I think it's a huge part of the patient's and caregiver's journey. Because if you don't have the right mindset, you know, going in, how are you going to overcome, uh, if you're a patient, the, the medical you know, the medical part of it. How are you going to overcome surgery? How are you going to overcome chemotherapy? How are you going to process your emotions? And I, unfortunately, I, I, I rarely see, you know, um, physicians, you know, acknowledge the caregiver and the mm -hmm. emotions and the patients. Yeah, I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping that changes, and because they're yeah. really part of the essential care team, you you're with you're an expert in Karen's health and your own health and well being, and and they're counting on you to manage her trach and you know make sure that she's got her ventilator and yes. you know all of that. So um, what I've have what I have noticed though is that there's more resources available. For patients and caregivers. However, you still have you have to be 
proactive. Mm-hmm. You have to advocate. And there, you know, um, it's, it's, it's still not, there's no, um, like, there's, rarely are you going to get somebody who says, oh, well, th- somebody who sits down and says, this is what's available. You have to kind of, you know, look for it and, and Google it and yeah. go on, go on um, you know, the hospital's website or the medical um, websites and, and see, you know, Google caregivers. Caregiver support in whatever area you're in. Um, yeah. You still have to do some yes, proactive digging. stuff. Digging, digging. Um, well, that's why I hope people connect to these stories and these podcasts because, you know, I've got my experiences, but we all, when we share um, and we shine spotlights on other caregivers, I know you know, it starts to plant seeds. And then if you share this episode or podcast with somebody, you know, who's caring for somebody, then that just helps make that whole system a little bit easier. Our community um, grows. I, um, uh, you know, I know that you have not been able to work um, because of caregiving. And I'm just curious without getting in the nitty gritty of your financial life, but like, how have you and Karen made it work that way? Well, um, I've been a, I, I started, um, I was a, I was, I am able to work. Okay. You do with the book and the consulting. I've, I've, uh, I worked with the department of mental health in the state of Massachusetts and, uh, for, for several years. And then I realized, uh, um, I worked in, um, a group home. Okay. And I realized that oh my goodness, I'm a caregiver twice. (laughs) Yeah, working, like, that happens to people. It's like, you're, not only is it at home, it's in your work life, and oh my gosh, you probably need a break. I I realized that, and it it was, it was like, oh my goodness, what am I doing? I'm caregiving at work, and I'm caregiving at home. So, um, her parents were able to help out, that's why I was able to get uh, the job, and then I realized I want to do something bigger with my life Mm -hmm. and then i i left dmh and i decided to write a book and uh do some speaking gigs and uh, that's how i met you Mm -hmm. and um you know i'm i developed a website and um good i've gotten into coaching and so i consider myself a coach for um caregivers and an advocate for uh, caregivers and self, I'm trying to um, develop retreats for in, that involve self care for men. That'd be awesome. So I'm fortunate enough that I'm able to do these things. That's wonderful. And provide care for my wife. And it's needed. It's so so needed um, in the space. And I think, um, and particularly the the perspective that you have with the years that you had and the and and being a male and trying to get those emotions out of the men, I think is important. Um, And we'll link, of course, to your, your website, um, Jeff Grant consulting will, um, dot com, right. We'll link to that. And um, also where they can find the book there too. So you, um, before we get into the lightning round, I do wanted to ask you about, you say that part of your caregiving job is to bring in the fun. I love that. So um, that's a happy part. Yeah, and I know that you were able to kind of encourage Karen to have fun by all through the book, you know, you can see her photos, right? That's right. She's an amateur photographer and she took all the photos for the book. That's wonderful. But how, what, you know, how else do you bring in the fun? Oh my goodness. It could be as simple as going for an ice cream. Yeah. It could, it could be as simple as going for a car ride. It could be as simple as doing a puzzle together. Um, it's kind of like getting back to basics. Um, she, I encourage her photography. Uh, I take her to like public gardens where she can take pictures. Um, I've encouraged her to put out a calendar for Christmas every year of her, of her pictures. Um, everybody's different, but I try to encourage her. I try to encourage her hobbies and 
that has made all the difference in the world. Mm -hmm. Because it gives it's her- It's not just taking over this, you know, disease, this cancer, not just taking over every p bit and piece of your life, you're living your life. Yes, we've, we've, we've traveled. Yes, uh, did you take a vacation? You said you were gonna, in the book, you said that the, one of your goals was to take a vacation. Was that able to happen? Yeah, exactly. that... we, we take, okay. we're able to take vacations. And whether it's down, uh, you know, whether it's three hours away, spending, you know, a couple nights overnight, or whether it's one night, or whether it's going to um, Niagara Falls. I still have not seen Niagara Falls. That's on my mind. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. And she's able to travel all around um, without her medical supplies. She's doing, she's doing great. That's awesome. That's so awesome. I, it puts her in a good spot for getting through the next, um, you know, through this yeah, next round. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I just try to, um, you know, foster her growth, foster my, you know, keep my growth going. And that's so important because I'm honoring myself and I'm honoring that part in her, that growth part in her. Yeah, we all need that. And I think people need to hear that. So I appreciate you sharing that. All right. I, I agree, so 100%. we're going to go through the lightning round. This is, I'm basically just pulling different prompts. Um, so there's 365 prompts in here, one from every day. They're all uh, related to self care. Uh, I wrote the book with caregivers in mind, but it's not necessarily just for caregivers because everybody can use um, some self-care. So one of the things, and since we were talking about, um, I haven't mentioned on this, is that on every month, there's what I call monthly fun pages. And so this one has um, things to do, things to buy and have, things to be, or places to go. So we'll make that into a question. What, uh, do you have a... a a new place that you want to go and visit? A new place? Well, I'd love to visit um, Disney. I'd love to visit Disney next year uh, if, there's, if, the, uh, if there's a vaccine yeah. for the COVID. So I don't put my wife's uh, wife in jeopardy. Yes. Um, so fun that you all would have an amazing time. And, and I know Disney would take good care of you because they only know how to do it one way. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I think it's important to always have goals. Yes. Whether you're a caregiver or a patient, it doesn't have to be taking a trip to Disney. Mm -mm. I realize that it could be completing a puzzle, the goal of finishing it. Mm -hmm. It could be the goal of taking a walk once a week. It could yeah. be the goal of, of uh, you know, going to see, uh, going to a park, going to a movie, you know, yeah. going to a lecture, going to your local library. Just putting those things in that you enjoy. I do something called the 20 for 2020 list. Yes. So it has like 20 little things. And so one of the things we recently we were able to check off was um, I wanted to ride one of those motorized scooters like that we see yes. in, in the town. So we call them birds, but they have different names. Yes, and so I know about, yeah. my family and I, on my birthday, we did, we um, went and rode birds in a parking lot. Uh, That's excellent. Yeah. And so it was like literally, you know, $10 of fun, uh, low risk because we had, you know, with, with what's going on, we could clean yeah. off the, the bike and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm a believer in, in the little, in the little fun things. So I'll link to the 20 for 20 in case other people want to check If I could out. just add something. Yeah. Caregivers are so logistic. Like we're great at the logistical stuff. We forget to have fun. Yeah. And I'm guilty. I'm a productivity ninja. Yeah. Um, and when I was first going to a support group, when my mom was living nearby in assisted living, you know, I get completely overwhelmed that I couldn't get all the things done. And then somebody had just said, like, you, every time you visit your mom, you need to do one fun thing together so that you still kind of protect this relationship too. You protect your husband and wife relationship, yes. you know, my mother and daughter relationship. And so it would be, it would be intentional. It would be like, okay, mom, I'm here for X amount of time. What are the top two things you need me to do? And then let's do something fun. Do you want to play Skipbo? Was a card game she liked? Do you want to um, watch 
Grace and Frankie? Do you want to, you know, or Frankie yeah. and Grace, I can't remember, but, um, and so I would let her choose kind of something, but then it wouldn't be like, I did all this stuff and then laughed and never spent any time with her. Exactly. exactly. It's so important. I had that someone tell me that like it wasn't. Yeah, it's so important because it's like, we, we, it's a, you know, it's a, we, we we're comfortable with our habits mm -hmm. and I, I respect that. And I understand that, but there's always room to introduce something else. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so another question says, if someone told you self-care was selfish, you would say? I would say there's nothing selfish about self-care. Self-care, whether you're a caregiver or not, is, it's necessary. It's respecting, it's, a, it's respecting yourself. I call it emotional respect. Mm -hmm. When you respect your emotions and yourself, you're respecting your emotions and your loved one. Exactly. That's so good. Okay. Last question, lightning round is, um, what's a life lesson that you believe needs to be taught in school? Oh, oh, great question, Elizabeth. <laughs> um, I think that, um, Self-care is one of the biggest life lessons. Mm -hmm. um, I may start to sound repetitive, but... Um, it's okay. We got to hear things eight times before well, they... So often, <laughs> we're, 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 um, we, we try to please other people. And sometimes we do that as at the expense of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And self-care has brought so many wonderful things into my life. Um, you know, it's, it's allowed me to be, it's allowed me to grow as a person. And I know that you know, it's important when you're caring for somebody, it's important if, even if you're not. But self-care, it allows you to, it gives you more greater peace in your life, greater space to grow as a human being. And um, life is just more darn fun. Yeah. When you practice self-care. It is, it, is, it is not selfish at all. To, to take care of yourself, in the, especially in the middle of a crisis, it's, it's the most honorable thing you can do. Mm -hmm. And I think if our youth learned that in school, it would give them this foundation. Um, you know, people are living longer. Everybody's going to be a caregiver at some point. Whether you're a caregiver or not, self-care is going if to caregiver or not, benefit everybody. It's important to learn that's the skill of self-care. Mm -hmm. I love uh, it. It's teach it. Jeff yeah, teach I, it. Yeah, Jeff's in Boston. I'm in the Atlanta area. We can teach it. Yes. <laughs> we're, we we're highly um we're highly open to teaching other people and discussing it. And um there's no I think that like, like some people think there's like a big there's something you have to get. Like it's a big secret. No. It, it's not, it, there's nothing to get really. It's just honoring yourself. Yeah, we're all put here. And that's we're so all put here for some purpose. So um, yes. sometimes you have to discover discover what that is and, and really- It's not always it. easy. Sometimes it's painful. Yeah, you have to, exactly. Well, Jeff, I have enjoyed this. Um, you know, you. Yeah, yeah. And you filled my bucket up for the day. I'm just going to go gangbusters through the rest of today. So um, I appreciate this time together. I think it, uh, you've shared a lot of really good messages for people that I know they need to hear um, or be reminded of. And hopefully um, we've, you know, encouraged some men, hopefully that we're, are, are going to see your picture and say, okay, well, I'll listen to that one. Um, and I'm, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for you. And I'm thinking about you and Karen, and I would love to just be updated and 
and follow you to see how, how things are going. Absolutely. Thank you for, um, you know, having me as a guest on your podcast. And uh, I greatly enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much.